welcome back to Mom's Kitchen with the sewing machine. Um, this is the Singer Tradition 2277. I just picked this up and got it out of the box. So I'm gonna we're gonna do a brief overview about what all's in the box and what kind of things I saw right off the bat. And then I'll be doing separate small videos about how to use the machine. So if you already have one and you're looking to uh, use it, be sure and hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when the next video comes out. Should be shortly, maybe even today. Um, I got this at Joann's. It was the Doorbuster special for $129.99. But I don't think, you know, even normally they're not that much higher. So it was a pretty good, wasn't, wasn't all that expensive. It's a Singer machine, so yes, it's pretty solid. This one has all metal on the inside. So let's look at what comes in the box. You get a package of needles, extra needles. This is a screwdriver. This is a darning plate. And when you see one of these included in your machine, what this means is you're going to put this, it's going to fit down here under the bed, and it's going to cover up these feed dogs. If you look down in, in, uh, under your plate here, under your foot, you see these little serrated edge things, and they move. That's what moves the fabric through the machine. So some machines have it where you can drop those down if you want to do some free motion sewing which we'll talk about later on so obviously this one is not going to have feed dogs that you can drop if you need to do something where you move the fabric instead of having the machine move it this is not going to be the machine for you unless you want to um, use the darning plate what that'll do is it'll cover up the feed dogs so they're not moving your fabric this is a button foot. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, the little blue tip. You hold your button. It holds your button under the needle if you want to sew a button on by hand. Whoops, there that one. This is a zipper foot, which you use when you're doing a zipper because it lets you get right up to the teeth in the zipper. This strange looking metal thing, let me see if I can get it where you can see it decently. I don't know. There we go. Um, this is a guide if you're trying to quilt. You have little guides underneath on this plate, little lines that tell you how far away from the seam the edge of your fabric is. It's called a seam allowance. Um, and this one goes, well, I don't see the, a lot of them have numbers on them. I don't see that this one does. Like I said, I just got this out of the box. Um, it looks to be like a good, you know, two inches maybe worth a guide here. But if you want to sew further away, like if you're quilting something and maybe you want three or four inches, you can put this, I'll show you how to attach it later, but it will attach to your bar here so that you can guide even further out. But that's all it is, is a guide to help you line up a certain distance from the edge of the fabric. We have this handy little lint brush and if you pull the end out of it, it has a very sharp little um, seam ripper. And I always tell people, if you use this seam ripper, when you get through with it, put it back in the case and then put it up. Because children and dogs, for some reason, will find these and they will chew it or play with it until this comes out. And then you don't just have a little brush, you have a weapon, okay? So please be very careful with this little thing. It's probably one of the most dangerous things in my house is a seam ripper. So put it up unless you have it in your hand and you're using it. The brush part is to brush the lint out from under it. And I'll show you how to clean the machine in another video. You have several bobbins. I think there's four all together. There's two in the package. There's one on here that they use to thread it, and then there's one in the bobbin compartment, which I'll show you in just a second. You have two, let me get this one off. One is already on here. Um, these hold your thread onto your spool holder right here. You have a small one and you have a large one. Now the large one is if you are using a spool of thread like this one, 
This one has a little slit in it right here so that you can slip this thread in it and it holds it tight for you. Well, if you put it on the spool holder, as the thread is trying to go around, it can get snagged on that. So for any of them that have a cut in the side like this, you're gonna wanna use this bigger one. It holds the thread out away from that edge so that you don't get it um, caught, okay? Um, and next we have the buttonhole foot. This was very interesting to me. You see how this buttonhole, buttonhole foot looks? Some of your um, starter machines come with a buttonhole foot that looks like this. You see how much larger this one is? This is because you can slide this up. You're going to be able to put a button in here and then tighten it down to hold it in place. Put it on your machine and your machine will automatically move from going on a side tack to a crossbar down and then back across. You don't have to stop and start and guide it yourself. This one came off of another uh, low, really lower end machine, so it does do a buttonhole, but you have to like draw the buttonhole yourself and then start and stop it. So this is an automatic buttonhole foot, which I thought was a really nice um, feature on a beginner kind of machine. Um, now let's talk a bit about this thread spool holder. This is a horizontal spool holder. It goes back and forth. Some spool holders go straight up and down, the vertical kind. Depending on what kind you have, you will decide which kind of thread you're gonna use. And I talk about this in another video. There's two kinds of thread. There is stacked thread and there is cross wound thread. Um, stacked thread, if you look at it, it is just wrapped straight across. There is, I mean, it is stacked one row right on top of each other. It just comes right off the spool straight. This is cross wound thread. And if you can see, I'm gonna try to get it right. It makes little X's or it's got like a cross weave to it. If you ever look at thread up close, you'll be able to tell the difference. This is cross wound because the threads are not going straight across. They're going at an angle. Now, when you have a horizontal thread spool, you want cross wound thread. I am not an engineer and I am not a machine designer or anything else. I just know I've researched this quite a bit. And because of the way the thread is put on the spool, when you have a cross wound thread, you want it to come straight off, okay? When you have, so if you have it in this position and it's being pulled, it's like unwinding correctly. Now this, if you put it on there, number one, you have to use the bigger spool. Oops, sorry. You have to use the bigger spool holder to keep it from getting caught and it's, it's just not as smooth. Whereas if you have it upright, it twists and it comes off that way. So, first tip, this has a horizontal spool, so you're gonna wanna use cross wound thread. And you know, most thread these days is cross wound. Now, this Coates and Clark is still stacked. So, but just about everything else I see is cross wound. Um, I like cross wound thread just because I like Mettler and that's another thing probably more important than your machine is the thread that goes through it. I cannot tell you how many times I've had a machine and I would hate the machine until I change threads. So if you are literally, if you have tried everything and you cannot get your machine to sew properly, try a different brand of thread. Just see, it won't hurt. You know, you've already invested in the machine. So go spend four or five dollars more and get a different brand of thread and see. I am surprised. I have several different brands because I have some machines that hate one thing and love the other. So, you know, thread is very important. Um, next, I want to talk just for a second about the bobbin. So, let me get a better camera angle. Okay, here we go. Your bobbin is behind. This thing comes off so that you do have a really nice free arm. This is good if you need to sew a cuff or anything that you need to slide on here. It gives you, you know, a narrower space to work with. Now, um, your bobbin is right in here. 
A lot of machines have a thing that slides off and you drop the bobbin down, not this one. Uh, this is kind of an older version. I don't see a whole lot of machines with this anymore. You have a lever. Let me see if I can get something to, uh, here this will work. There's a lever right here that you're going to flick it out. And once you open that lever, your bobbin will just pull. Once you open that lever, it unlocks your bobbin, okay? So that's how you get it out. And there's your other bobbin right in there. So I thought this was really interesting. I haven't noticed, you know, very many front load bobbins anymore. I don't know why. Like I said, I'm not an engineer. So when you get ready to put this back in, get your tail over there, the thread tail, not your real tail. Um, you're gonna hold this lever, this lever right here, you have to hold it out. And then this little part right here is going to fit right into, there's a little um, notch right there. It just fits right in there. And then you snap it. And once that snap, you can wiggle it around, make sure it's secure. It shouldn't flip out. If you can still pop it out, then it didn't lock in, okay? So, now, as far as the other things this machine has, um, let me see what it says on the box. There are a hundred different stitch applications. It has a needle threader. These are going to be your different stitches right here. And the reason there's two colors here, notice there's a black one and a blue one all the way around. Up here on this dial, if you are on the zero, one, two, three, four, the black numbers, then you get the black stitch. If you twist this dial all the way around so that it says S1 up here, the blue part, then you can have it in the same position, but you're going to get the blue stitches, okay? So, it also has an LED light, which is pretty bright. You know, I have another machine that the light, you can barely tell if it's on or off, but this is nice. Okay, so that's the overview of this whole machine. I'm fixing to get geared up and start the how-to tutorials about how to thread it, how to do the bobbin, how to do a straight stitch. And I've started doing these videos separate because I know people just want to see what they want to see when they want to see it. So like I said, hit the subscribe button, click the little bell thing if you want instant notification, and I'm fixing to go to the sewing room and see if I can get you a how-to thread this machine, okay? See you next time, bye.